Tonight on Life on the Rock, we'll have our Christmas special with the Friars, some classic wisdom from Mother Angelica, a reflection from Brother John on the Nativity, and much more. Welcome to our Life on the Rock Christmas special. Tonight the guests are the Friars. We're going to have a conversation about Christmas and help you to enter into this Christmas season with greater faith and devotion. We also have a reflection on the Nativity from Brother John Therese where he challenges us to seek God where we least expect Him. And now to a classic Christmas moment with Mother Angelica. The first birthday of the Lord Messiah, the first birthday, and it was cold and nobody was there but Joseph and Mary. And tonight, in most places in the world, it's cold and there's nobody there but Jesus and Mary. We haven't changed very much. We're too interested in the world, in the things of the world. And we don't know either that he has come among us. And then it says, the shepherds were terrified. And the angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. You hear what it says? The angel appeared to a few shepherds. They're the only ones he could find. They weren't too busy. Just sitting around talking. Maybe they were talking about the Messiah. Maybe they were sitting there wondering in the middle of the night, would he ever come? Aren't things always going to be like this? And then suddenly there was a great light and they didn't know what was happening. And they were petrified. Wouldn't you be? I hope you'd be. I would be. If you looked up into the sky and the whole sky was lit up at midnight. And you saw angels up there and, and they were singing their hearts out. I bet there had to be one deaf shepherd. <laughs> and he'd say, what they're saying? They say, oh, shut up. We don't know ourselves. I write my own scripture. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> he says, it's going to be great joy. Over what? Well, listen, shut up, but I'll tell you what. He said, the Messiah's here. No. Yeah. Well, where is he? In some cave. A cave? The Messiah in a cave? Yeah. He's like us. Poor. Unknown. Unheralded. Unaccepted by his own. But the angel said the whole people should know. Do you know? Do you know? You're part of the whole people. Do you know whose birthday it is? Welcome, Father Joseph, to Life on the Rock, your first visit. Great to be in your new place. This yeah. is great. Yeah. yeah. We're going to put some wallpaper, but it'll look nice. <laughs> so but we want to talk about Christmas to help people to enter into the Christmas celebration more mm -hmm. deeply. You're in charge of our chapel department. You have great plans for the music. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, you know, I think that's one of the highlights that we all look forward to is Christmas music. Mm. And, you know, when I was in Japan with Mother Angelica, this was, I think, 2003, it was December. And I was so surprised when we went 
out to the uh, stores and things that you heard these Christmas carols in English. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to those Christmas carols because they're very theologically sound. You know, most of them are about the incarna incarnation, the reality of the incarnation. And so I think that's one of the things we know the words to these, we enjoy hearing them, we enjoy singing them. And so in the chapel department last year, we decided for the whole octave of Christmas, we're gonna have the choir here. Mm. Because you want to do the greatest solemnities with greater solemnity. And right. Christmas and Easter are the greatest solemnities. Because yeah. every day is so, an octave, right? That's right. Every day is a solemnity. It's Christmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for the whole eight days of the Christmas octave, we're going to have the choir here, and they always do a wonderful job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is something, a special grace anointing to the music. It's just full of joy, mm -hmm. and uh, there's something special about it. It almost seems supernatural about Christmas music. It is. We don't have a, a televised mass Christmas Eve from right. the little chapel here, but what I decided to do is to have a little children's choir because it's also something about children. And so we have hymns, you know, to the little child Jesus and the manger and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. And Father John Paul, we'll all be doing a lot of preaching different places. Right. What are some of the themes you like to speak about during Christmas? I think going all through up Advent and then going into Christmas, you know, Advent is talking about um, the prophecies of the Messiah, going through the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Jeremiah, and uh, the figure of John the Baptist, uh, the forerunner of the Lord. And when we get to Christmas, we're speaking about um, the birth of a Lord and the babe of Bethlehem. And I can't help but think about St. Francis, you know, St. Francis mm -hmm. who, um, really is the one who petitioned the Pope to have the live nativity scene. Mm -hmm. And he wanted people to experience um, the joy of Christmas and to see the babe of Bethlehem. And there's, there's something beautiful, I think, about, we do a lot of preaching. I, I know we talk about that a lot. And Father Mark, I know you, mm -hmm. you say that a lot. That's something that, that I think that we do often is, is part of our mission is to preach and to teach. Right. Um, so, you know, we're having to prepare a lot. We can't give what we don't have. Mm -hmm. So in order to preach well, I think we need to prepare well. So yeah. Yeah. I think we're always reading like commentaries. We're reading yeah. like for, former yeah. homilies of like Pope Benedict mm -hmm. XVI, mm -hmm. Pope John Paul II, all these different themes about Christmas. That's what I yeah. try and do to yeah. prepare myself mm -hmm. for Christmas. And that is, that is the great sign of, you talk about the fulfillment of the prophecies to Isaiah, uh, the king Ahaz, you know, in yeah. 733 B.C., he was told the sign will be given to you, a virgin shall be with a child. You know, it, it waits over 700 years for fulfillment. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is the fulfillment of that sign. And that's, that's told to the shepherds that the angels appear to them and said, this will be the sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger at this gift of God himself. And Paul Benedict said something so beautiful about this that, you know, God wants to conquer us from within. Mm. You know, like a, an army conquers us, forces us to do True. stuff from a foreign invading country. God just comes to us in this humility, doesn't, isn't demanding anything of us, just wants our love. That's the sure. proper response to a child. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to offer us, so to speak, in a worldly sense. But just ask for love. And it's the most non-threatening right. way. Yeah, a, and a child is not, there's nothing scary about a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we all want to run up to, yeah. you, know, you see how ch children run up to the manger scene and want to look in. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's yeah. something about that, there's something inviting about uh, yeah. this invitation of a child, you know, mm -hmm. to win over our hearts. Right. I like something that Bishop Sheen says in his Life of Christ. And he says that many people have claimed to have been from God mm -hmm. or sent by God. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is the only one whose coming was foretold, was mm. announced. And if somebody really did come from God, it would make sense that they would be announced before they arrived. And so mm. we have these prophecies like Isaiah and other prophets who pointed toward Bethlehem mm. and toward this babe born of the virgin. Mm. And we see them fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And I've heard you say those shepherds represent Israelites in a special way, right? That mm -hmm. they were... Jewish people. Right, so they were of the, uh, the Jewish uh, faith, but the, they were also those that were kind of scorned in society. Right. So they're their very first witnesses yeah. 
of the birth of Jesus. God right. always chooses those lowly little ones. He mm. himself is born in a cave, in a stable, yeah, yeah. in a manger, right? Right, yeah. I've heard it said that like even their testimony wasn't even accepted in court because it was considered mm -hmm. unreliable. Right. But yet they're chosen to be the witnesses of this incredible event that I, I love that theme that God doesn't need the great things of this world to achieve his purposes. <clears throat> so coming in such a humble way, it frees us that we don't have to get clothed in the great things of the world to meet God. Right. That's we can get point. lowly, right, like the shepherds. So uh, it's always encouraging for Christmas and, and to enter into that mystery. You know, the church fathers talked about, you know, running to the manger with the shepherds you know, as they ran that night. And uh, certainly a Franciscan tradition. Mm -hmm. So, Do you remember uh, being in Bethlehem and seeing the Bedouins there with yeah. their sheep? And we had a sense, because we were in Shepherd's Field, that it wasn't all that uh, far really for them. They had to go down the hill and up mm -hmm. to the hill to Bethlehem. All but right. you kind of had a sense this was something possible and how that was a reality when we actually saw the Bedouins with their sheep there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah still today. Still today. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Father Joseph. And we're going to talk to Brother John and Brother Leo in a minute. We'll speak with Brother Leo and Brother John Therese after the break. Now back to our interview with the Friars. Well, Brother Leo and Brother John Therese, you've made many segments for us so far on Life on the Rock. It's your first time to be in the, the interview part of the show. Uh, Brother John, I wanted to start with you. You had a, a big year this year in the community. Tell us about that. I did this year. I made my perpetual vows on August 11th. And uh, for me personally, that was just a great joy and excitement to really just commit myself to this right. life and really have that direction mm -hmm. and peace. Um, it's just been something I've been uh, looking forward to for a long time. And um, so I think that was just a great... Uh, just being around the community, um, just my family, they were there. And um, and just all the love and support of all the mail that I got, of realizing how many people are praying, uh, right. you know, for our community and just the mission of EWTN. And just that's a powerful witness. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so for me, that was just a, just a great joy and blessing in my right. life. So. And you mentioned to me before about uh, your first Christmas here. I, I remember my first Christmas too, not distinctly, but just how the, the sisters would always, uh, always make a big deal out of it with the right. singing and everything. Uh, tell us about your first Christmas in the community. Well, it, uh, the first Christmas I was, I didn't know how I'd feel because you're away from home. And for me personally, growing up, Christmas is a time where we all get together, go to mass, mm -hmm. you know, and. It's a time of just a great celebration. But for me, being in the community, it was just a very, uh, it just felt very natural to f celebrate Christmas with the Friars. Right. And that was something I, I, I greatly enjoy. And just the coming together, you know, yeah. one of our brothers from seminary come down yeah. and uh, are there with us. And just even just, you know, on the day before when we get everything ready, setting up the chapel and all that, it's just uh, a great, you know, just a, a just a great blessing. Yeah, I guess looking back on it for me, I just remember, I guess looking, thinking about it now, is that, you know, how much, how rich the liturgy, the mass, the Christmas oh, yeah. mass, the octave can be, you know, with the music and the beauty and the flowers and the celebration and everything, how much that can really enrich your whole experience of Christmas. It is. Maybe coming in, we're thinking yeah. just about presents and all that kind of well, stuff. I, I do remember my, my first <laughs> mass, um, Christmas Mass, I believe you were the main celebrant, mm -hmm. and I was the, the cross foot bearer, yeah. but I just remember there was, you know, it was a midnight Mass, and there was just all this incense, and just, it was just a great <laughs> celebration, and I just remember just the way everything was lit up, yeah. just the liturgy, just, it just was very profound, right. and, um, yeah, uh, Brother Leo, I know uh, you work a lot with kids and stuff with your, your television work and even with your family and things. Tell us about children, and they're the special sign of Christmas, right? Jesus yeah. the Christ child. Tell us about that. Well, when I think of Christmas, I always think of the children, mm -hmm. mainly because they point to Jesus as a little baby and how he, God became man, tiny little baby, totally dependent on everybody and his mother and father especially. 
And then when you look at children, they're just totally dependent on their parents and everybody else for everything. And mm -hmm. so we have to be totally dependent on God for everything. He created us. He keeps us in existence. And if we want to become holy and do what he's called us to do, we have to totally depend on him right. and do what he has called us to do. And he gives us all the sacraments, the mm -hmm. graces that we need in order to become holy. Right. And it's all dependence on God. So Christmas, is, for me, is, um, as I always like to s look at children, and they always point me to what little babies are like. They kind of teach us how to enter exactly. into that Christmas mystery. I, I like the passage from Matthew chapter 2 about the, the Magi were following the star. They came and stopped over the place where the child was, and they were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, they prostrated themselves and did him homage, and they gave him their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And I, I always like that, that fullness that's presented there. You have the Christ child, and you have Mary. You know, certainly an image of the church. You find Jesus in the church with Mary. But Mary herself is such a, a, a central figure of Christmas. Does, how does Mary help you to celebrate Christmas or thinking about her? Well, my mother died when I was three, so I always have a great love for the Blessed Mother because she was my mother. And, um, well, I just, she's my mother. So, yeah. like a yeah. child going yeah. to your mother, yeah. and at Christmas time, it's even more because she gives me everything I need. So. Right, right. Yeah, there's something very comforting about, uh, our Brother John, you mentioned it, Christmas and family and how important that is, and there we have the Holy Family, Mary's at the heart of that family as, a, as the mother of the family. And she helps us to introduce us to the Christ child, helps us to enter into Christmas. Has that been your experience? Oh, very much so. Mm -hmm. And um, I think even just reflecting on the own natural relationship between a mother and child, mm -hmm. you know, I. I mean, I go to my mother for all sorts of things. Yeah. But, uh, but just even seeing that relation between Mary and Christ, and that that's her special and unique role to be the mother of God, right. and that she was chosen. And um, mm. so that's, that's just very powerful. Um, just to it really enter into that mystery of seeing a family there. It, it so. communicates along that theme of the gentleness, of the gentleness of a child, God coming to us as a child. And Mary has such a strong yeah. present there, presence there. We see the you know, tenderness, the so. tenderness of the face of God. You know, that, that just maybe that's why we love the season so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a very tender moment. Uh, you've done a lot of little video segments for us. You're working on some upcoming ones about military chaplains. I am. Um, so I come from a big kind of a military family, and um, but I, I've always read stories of chaplains, Medal of Honor winners, and just figures, priests. And um, that I've just been in the service, and just mm -hmm. you don't really hear much about them, but they have a story, of just a very um, inspiring story of just heroic sacrifice, mm -hmm. and just a straight, um, just a love for God, and just a laying their life down for others. So and what they had to endure and overcome. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now here's Brother John's reflection on the Nativity. In college, I read a book by Archbishop Fulton Sheen called life is worth living. And on his chapter over the nativity, he had this line that said, divinity is where you least expect to find it. So I always thought this was a curious expression because I'd never heard it before. But our Lord, he was born in a stable cave instead of a palace or a house or an inn. And so whenever I think of a cave, usually I'm thinking of something as at least a modern person something dark, maybe spooky, something where even creatures are hiding out. But our Lord was born into this environment, and I think that's rather fitting, because it calls us to enter into that cave, into an unknowing. And if we think about the shepherds, they were guided by angels, and they wandered into this cave not knowing anything. Or if we think about the wise men, they were guided by a star, and they knew that they didn't know everything. And likewise, whenever we approach Christ, Many times we don't know how to maybe express or fully understand all the mysteries of our faith. There is a lot of unknowing. So we come to know Christ in the nativity as both God and man. So we gaze upon his humility, his poverty, 
his simplicity. We see that he was born in a dark, damp, and rugged environment. And as we reflect on his humility, his poverty, and his simplicity, we're drawn into a deeper conversion, joy, and intimacy with the living God. We've seen this manifested in the lives of many saints, notably St. Francis of Assisi and St. Therese of Lisieux. So as we pray and reflect on the joyful mysteries of the Rosary, the Nativity, we can be called to mind that divinity is where you least expect to find it. And this Christmas season, we can also extend this to meditating more deeply on the Holy Eucharist, or the Church, or the poor. As it is known, as Scripture reveals, that Emmanuel means God is with us. I enjoyed uh, Brother John's wisdom tonight, you know, quoting from Bishop Sheen about we find God sometimes in these very unexpected places, and that's certainly true of Christmas. He comes in such poverty and hiddenness. In many ways, the world misses it. Oh, yeah, but the sure. very essence of God and the gift of Himself to us in Jesus Christ is there in the Christmas mystery, not clothed in the great things of this world that were blinded by any kind of dazzling worldliness, but in this very great simplicity and poverty. Yeah, I think we miss divinity all the time, mm -hmm. all the time in our lives. You know, God didn't come to us uh, on a fiery chariot. He came to us in a baby. Right. You know, and, and I think that, you know, in that, that babe of Bethlehem shows us that he was born to die and also so, so that we might have life and give us the, the fullness of life. And Mother Angelica gave us some great wisdom as well, you know, telling us not to miss Christmas for this world and the glory of this world. Are we too distracted during this season? We get caught up in the things of this world and the secular celebration of Christmas. And she had a wonderful way of connecting, uh, you know, to the shepherds. They were watching and waiting. We are to watch and wait and to receive our Lord. Yeah, Mother Angelica has just this beautiful way of talking about the Lord. Yeah. You know, just this conversation. You you feel like you're sitting at the footsteps of your grandmother and and just waiting for her to unfold before you what's next. And she has this beautiful way, and, and that comes from her relationship. She mm -hmm. said, do you know, three mm -hmm. times. And that just comes from her relationship. She wants us to know the one that she knows, Jesus Christ. So our Into the Vineyard challenge this week is to keep the Christmas season. The secular world, Christmas ends after Christmas Day, right? You throw yeah. out the tree and things. For Catholics, though, we celebrate the Christmas season all the way to February 2nd. In fact, we celebrate a whole octave. Yeah, right? we celebrate octave. Mm -hmm. um, so Christmas is every day. There's a solemnity every day from Christmas the whole way up to uh, January 1st. That is the, the solemnity of the Mo Mary, the Mother of God. But Christmas goes all the way up, really the season, until February 2nd, the presentation. Mm -hmm. And our, our bishop, Bishop Baker, he was the former bishop of Charleston, South Carolina. That he, he witnessed somebody throwing their Christmas tree out just a day or two after mm -hmm. Christmas. So that, that's not what we want to do. We don't want to throw out mm -hmm. the decorations. Right. We don't want to take down our nativity scene. We yeah. want to keep yeah. the Christmas season going all the way to February 2nd. And I thought Father Joseph made a great point as well tonight about the liturgy, the beauty of the Mass, all mm -hmm. the incense, and the great Christmas music. The liturgy represents to us the mysteries of Christ's life. Right. So allow it to help you to enter into this Christmas mystery, to focus, to have faith, to approach the crib with faith, to receive Jesus, to realize that God comes to us in this most non-threatening of ways as a child. He wants to conquer us from within. What he asks from us is our love. That's what babies want from us. Mm -hmm. They offer us nothing in the sense of a worldly sense, but they want us to love them. So we want to send you out into that vineyard with a final Christmas blessing. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock.
Sun.